Susan Diul has been performing ever since she can remember. Susan's first big break was replacing Amanda Plummer in You Never Can Tell on Broadway in New York City at Circle in the Square. Her first television role was on The Cosby Show, where she appeared in two episodes. That same year, she landed the role of Claudia Garrison in J. Preston Allen's television series Hot House. She starred in the TV movie Road Raiders, working with Tia Carrera. She also guest starred in the television drama Her Deadly Rival, with Harry Hamlin and Annie Potts. Memorable television series guest spots include John Larroquette's baby sister on Night Court, Robert Picardo's love interest on Star Trek Voyager, and in the Seinfeld episode, The Nose Job. She played a hooker on Wings, a nun on Murphy Brown, and she was a killer on Touched by an Angel. Other television roles enabled her to work with Andy Griffith, Dick Van Dyke, Hal Holbrook, Tay Diggs, Megan Mullally, Peter Strauss, and Mark Harmon. She was in some recent short films, Family Man, Dear Superhero, and Hostage. And she has an upcoming role in the movie Basement. But us leapers know her best as Beth Calavici, Al's wife and the great love of his life, in the Quantum Leap episode, MIA. Susan, I'm so excited to talk to you today. How are you doing? I'm doing great. Thank you so much for asking. How are you? I'm good. I'm extremely happy to be talking to you. I think one of the biggest story arcs in Quantum Leap may be Al's relationship with your character, Beth. So it's great to have you here. Could you tell me a little bit about how you got the part of Beth and also what you remember from the episode MIA? You know, I just had a standard audition for it, you know, where you get the sides ahead of time and then work on them and then go the next day and uh, audition. And, uh, you know, it was a lot of material at that time, many scenes, emotional, and the show is such a great show. I was really excited when I got the part. And also to work with uh, Scott Bakula and Dean, I mean, it's just an amazing experience for me. <laughs> Um, I just, you know, from the moment I was on the set, they were just wonderful to me. And it's like stepping into a family, and I immediately felt a connection with both of them. And, you know, they're just really lovely, creative people and very collaborative and supportive. And, you know, I know the scene when I had to, when I'm smoking and playing the music, thinking of my husband, and then we do the slow dance. It was just, you know, it was just like an amazing experience. It was like really, I felt like I was being visited by a ghost of someone, and he's just such a wonderful actor. Uh, he just gave so much, as did Scott. Um, it made the whole experience, he just, it, it felt very emotional, and, and it felt like it was a story that would be remembered. And, you know, then when you see the whole series, it was a very important part for my character and certainly for those two characters as well. But it was, I I just, I really enjoyed every aspect, you know, working with everybody, John Belisario, uh, you know, brilliant creator, producer, and the director, just everything in the, you know, every aspect of it. Were you surprised how big the character of Beth got, being a fan favorite, even though she only appeared in two episodes? Yeah, I was surprised, but then, you know, in watching it, every time, even now, when I watch the episode, it's just, it's still, there's so much feeling that comes from it, and um, that it was understandable to me, also, because he was such a beloved character, and the fact that he was able to change history (laughs) so that I did wait for him was pretty phenomenal, and I, I often meet fans, and they... You know, they still, it's like they saw it yesterday. Because it, 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 it does, it makes you feel. And to me, that's one of the most important aspects of storytelling is when it can make you feel and then you remember. You remember the feeling that you had when you watched it. You remember the feelings that you have from watching those characters. And I think that that's why, um, it, I think you really cared about Beth. And of course, you already cared about those two characters, but when when the audience cares about the characters, I think that that makes a huge difference in their remembering the feelings that they had from watching the show at that time. I think you nailed it. The episode is so well written and so well acted that for me, it feels like it's a real memory. Yeah, it's funny. In acting it, um, it felt real to me. <laughs> I remember feeling, you know, like really getting 
feeling those feelings, and I think that that's part of working with those two actors because they give you so much, and they feel they're feeling what they're doing at the time. They're not just you know acting; they they're really you you feel what they're feeling, and so then I think that it just becomes this visceral experience where you it's like it's like it's actually happening. Do you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. When you got the call to reprise your role in what would become the series finale, how did you feel about that? Oh, I, I was thrilled because, uh, you know, I did have such a soft spot in my heart for that character and for that show that I was really honored to be brought back and to find out that they actually, that they reunited and had children. And, you know, it's really sweet. It was a really sweet ending um, and closure for the characters I felt. So I was, I felt honored. You know, I, I thought, I just thought it was a really special show and every episode was so unique and the guest actors that they had on it. And, you know, there was always so much heart in that show and you cared so much. And, and, and then they had, you know, mean characters that you really hated. <laughs> and, you know, I just feel that it was, it was a really beautifully done show. That part when Beth is dancing with Al, I think for me and a lot of fans, really just makes the whole series that much better. Oh, well, thank you. I, yeah, it felt that way to me. And um, I, I mean, I, I, I'll watch it now and I still just, I start to cry. Like, it's almost like it's a memory. I mean, it is an actual memory because I was there doing it as an actor. But um, the way he was acting was just so moving that it really touched me. And so now, even now, it's like I watch it and it's like, oh, I wonder how he's doing. I wonder what he's up to. He's such a lovely man, and he's mm-hmm. so talented. And you know, I'm glad to hear that I'm not the only one that cries when they watch that. No, no, I cry every time. Actually, to be honest with you, whenever I hear the song, Georgia, oh, yeah. I'm like taken right back to that moment with him. And it's, you know, and I, and I, every time I hear that song, I start to cry. It, I, it's, it's the weirdest thing. Have you heard about the whole controversy of them uh, replacing that song on the Region 1 DVDs? Have people told you about that? Yes, and I, I've uh, heard it myself because I, you know, I wanted to buy it, to have it, to own it. And then I was so disappointed. <laughs> I was really, I was like, how could they do this? <laughs> it's like, it seemed like a crime to me. Mm-hmm. I mean, I, I don't understand all the logistics of it and... um you know, in terms of buying songs and whatnot, but I, it, it was really pretty, pretty disappointing to me. Yeah. Luckily, you can watch it on Netflix with the right music. Oh, that's good to know. Another thing I wanted to talk with you about is I'm a huge Star Trek fan, and you were on Star Trek The Next Generation and Star Trek Voyager. Can you tell me a little bit about your role on Star Trek The Next Generation? That was wonderful because, you know, I was really excited to get cast in it and you know, I had this little sexy thing with Jonathan, and then the character gets killed, and it was such a great <laughs> setup because you weren't expecting it at all. And I thought, oh no, really, my big chance on <laughs> Star Trek. And I, um, but even so, even so, it's a, a small part. It was, it was still such a great group of people to work with across the board. I mean, just great collaborators on in every aspect, from makeup to you know camera, to directing, to producing, I mean, across the board, just a a really great group of people. It was like a family, and they just welcomed you in. Even if you're only there for a few minutes before you (laughs) perish, (laughs) they were just very welcoming. Yeah, it was great. What was it like on Voyager when you played the Vidian and the Doctor's love interest, Dr. Donara Pell? That was an an amazing experience. Um, It was just, you know, I'm working with um, Bob Picardo, who's just lovely and quirky and just such a wonderful person, very caring and kind and supportive. It was a lovely experience and getting to play that type of a character who's so hideous and, you know, takes parts of all these different kinds of animals in order to survive and and then having the holograph where I'm at my uh, redeemed old self it was it was a it was a beautiful story. I, once again, I, I just felt like it was great storytelling, and everybody on the show was just wonderful to work with. The, the, you know, I had a long time in makeup when I had to be either the the dean with all the different various animal parts, and then um, and as my character when I was back to my normal self, that I still had to 
forehead and everything. Um, so it was a long time in makeup. But did they have to do a head cast and everything? Um, I, yeah, I think that they. I can't remember exactly. I just remember yeah, cause they had to build, You know, I had to have a bald cap on and then build up the forehead and put those lumps on <laughs> and everything. And my hairline had to go back. I think I even had like a wig attached as well. So it, yeah, it was a, it was a long involved process, but. You know, when you're in the makeup room and you're chatting with the other actors and the people, the makeup artists, it, it goes by really quickly. Or you're looking at your lines or running lines with fellow actors who are always so gracious to uh, run lines. But, it, you know, that was a wonderful part to play as well. And uh, the whole car scene where we're in, you know, in that old car and having a, a kind of date, it was very sweet. And uh, I think both Bob and I have a, uh, we have a shyness. Especially then, I think I, I really had a, an inherent shyness about me, and it worked really well for both of us with those characters, and um, I thought it was a really sweet story. I think part of it was about how beauty is from within and don't judge a book by its cover and all that. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, which is... Um, it's funny because it reminds me, I, I did an episode of Seinfeld where I had um, a prosthetic nose attached, and it's called The Nose Job, and it's, it's in one of the top 100 episodes, but I remember being on set during the weekend. Everybody was, you know, just talking and getting along with people, and then the day I had to wear the prosthetic nose, there were people who actually treated me differently, <laughs> like who didn't, who didn't talk to me as much, and I, it was such a fascinating experiment for me, because I was like, wow, so this is interesting, and it ties into that same thing of, you know, I had this huge nose, like Jimmy Durante, and there were people who just weren't as friendly to me. Um, and, uh, you know, but there were plenty of people that were great, like all the Jerry Sons on everybody. They were just terrific. But, you know, there were some people that just didn't speak to me. <laughs> so odd. So the, the the prosthetic must have been really good close up then. I think so. I mean, when yeah, I mean, it, it was it was pretty large. During the episode, they have a pretty large close up of it. And you can go and you can like see the pores in my nose. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so I guess it looked pretty realistic, and um, and it didn't change the way I looked. So that was, that was very interesting, but it ties into that same thing about, you know, what is beauty? And mm. I think it does come from the soul, and I think it does come from inside, and I think you should treat everybody, to, you know, well and kindly and not be treating them differently because of how they look. I agree. Yeah. Yeah, that's a very memorable episode. I love that episode of Seinfeld. Very funny. Have you done any yeah. other parts with a lot of prosthetic makeup on? I know you were in an Alien Nation movie. That's right. I did an Alien Nation movie and had to have a huge kind of pinhead, and, and that was a great experience as well. And I think I did a, a movie with Victoria Principal. I can't remember the name of it now, but um, I had to have a like a, a head cast. I think I got decapitated in it. I oh, my goodness. Like that. So I had to have that thing where you can only breathe through a straw mm-hmm. and while it's all hardening around you, and that was... I was a little um, claustrophobic, I have to say. But other than that, off the top of my head, I can't remember any other ones. It's so crazy. The first thing they do, they hire a beautiful woman and then cover her with a whole bunch of makeup. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) That's funny. (laughs) That's show business. (laughs) But, but, you know, it's fun to play different characters and to change your look. Um, And I've always felt that I was a character actor. So um, I enjoy, you know, transforming myself that way it's fun for me yes i definitely did have that moment where i was looking up all the different parts you did and i connected them all in my brain and then realized you were the same person i had no idea <laughs> well that's good that's yeah. that to me is a good actor if you're, if you're you can you know one of my favorite shows when i was a growing up a teenager is night court oh you played uh, john larroquette's kid sister on there right Yes, that was that was a really fun part to play. Um, I just modeled myself after him, and you know I was a real go getter, like willing to step on anybody to get ahead. Um, and it was a character very different than how I feel in real life. But it was just oh, this, that was a really fun character to play because there are certainly people that are like that in life, and uh, so that was yeah. I and mean, it was he's just a genius to work with. I mean, what a talent he is! So dry and funny and just great timing. Um, so I, I felt really lucky to get to get to work with him. It was cool because Brent Spiner was on that show and was on Next Generation after that too. So did you guys cross paths on Night Court at all? Oh, that's so funny. Um, truthfully, uh, Brent Spiner, 
I never worked with him, but I actually oh. dated him very briefly. Really? Because he, he and I had a mutual friend, Roy Brocksmith, mm-hmm. who was a very dear friend of mine. And Roy was on um, Star Trek, um, and he was in Arachnophobia and Total Recall. And he set Brent and I up on the date. And, um, and, and he was terrific. He was such a great person. I just, I wasn't ready to be in, you know, in a serious relationship. He seemed like such a grown up. And I was just like, <laughs> oh, I was scared. And so, yeah, it didn't work out. But what a, what a wonderful man and, and so talented. He seems like a great guy. He's funny. When I met him, he, uh, played a little joke on me that he could mentally figure out my name. And he said, ah. your name's Al or Albert, right? And I was like, yeah, how did you know? That's amazing, right? And I was like, of course, I was starstruck the first time I met him. And uh, it wasn't until like a half hour later, I realized I was wearing a convention badge with my name on the front of my shirt. <laughs> he is extremely bright, though. I mean, he's one of those people that's just super intelligent. Very cool. I never knew that. That's awesome. I know. <laughs> I read in your bio that you had actually worked on Broadway with another Quantum Leap guest star, John Cullum. Oh, yes. That was wonderful. Um, yeah, I was, I was very young, and Uta Hagen played my mother, the acting teacher extraordinaire, and it, it, she was wonderful. And Victor Garber was in it as well, and I had a huge crush on him because he was just a wonderful actor and wonderful man. And, yeah, and John Cullum, who is just a dear... Um, uh, I mean, I loved him on Northern Exposure, and I had no idea until I worked with him how much of a Broadway talent he was, too. And his son, J.D. Cohen, was in it as well, which was, I think, a treat for them to both be in the same play. And J.D. played my brother. So it was, that was a really an extraordinary experience, getting to be on Broadway with all those wonderful actors. More recently, you've done episodes of Murder in the First with Tay Diggs. What's it like working with him? Yes, yes. I did an episode last year, and then they brought my character back, and I just shot that about a week ago. And my character, when any police officer is in trouble or has been murdered, they have to come before our board, and so we're the two kind of stern people that they have to, you know, kind of, we have to interview them to find, get to the bottom of what really happened. And so, yeah, Tay Diggs was the person I worked with just in the most recent episode, and, well, he's just terrific. What a great talent and just such a giving actor and so subtle and I you know I was really I was watching him when the camera was on him and I think wow he's so he's, he's so, you can see his mind working in the thoughts of the character and um yeah he was really really just such a gentleman really great person to work with he's he's very charismatic he's the kind of guy when he's on screen that's all you're looking at oh yeah yeah when he's like that in real life and he's always he, we were making jokes and um we would, you know, we would be laughing right before the camera started rolling, and then he just immediately, you know, would just be very professional and get right into the character like that. And it's very impressive. But just, I think he's very gracious on the set with everyone and friendly and asking questions, you know, wanting to get to know about people's lives and things like that. He, you know, there are all kinds of actors. Sometimes they have to just be in their own space, which I respect, and you know, they have to, they don't want to talk to anybody. But he was just, you know, very outgoing and. and um, running lines, if you wanted to run lines, and he's just great. Yeah, that was, that's. A, I hope they they bring my character back. <laughs> and not uh, him so that, yeah, because that was a great experience. Can you tell me about the movie Basement? Sure. Um, that's an independent feature. It's directed by a young director named Corey Howard, and um, it's a dark story about a, a young man who we're not sure what's going on with him. He has a had a, a past of being mistreated and abused, and I play his mother in denial about what he went through as a child, and so he's keeping something in the basement, <laughs> or someone, <laughs> um, and uh, um, my character is suspicious and concerned and afraid, and um, that, it was a really interesting script, and we shot it in a very short period of time, and so I'll be curious to see how it turns out, but it was a great experience, um, very you know, once again, very great collaborators in terms of the producers and the director and everybody involved and all the actors. Um, Brian McClure, I think, was the star actor, and he's done some, he's been doing some um, sci-fi stuff recently, and uh, he was a terrific actor and uh, great to work with, and um, 
So it was a lot of fun. We'll see how it turns out. Yeah, it's hard to say it was fun, but when you're playing, <laughs> when it's a scary, disturbing movie, but it actually was. It was, from a psychological point of view, it was very interesting, challenging to uh, get to play that type of a character. Um, so I enjoyed it a lot, yeah. You have your own production company, right? I do. It's called um, Zen Green Films, and um, I've written and directed and shot about four short films. Some of them are still in a post-production, you know, perfectionism, I call it, mm-hmm. trying to get it right. Um, and then my daughter, um, who's in high school, is has written a, a, a terrific script that she's directing because she wants to go to film school and become a filmmaker. And so we're going to be shooting that next week, and I'm producing it and helping her. And her name is Juliet Cassidy. And uh, she's a terrific young writer, and I'm very impressed with her. Um, so that's that's been a great experience. Just uh, and I produced uh, I helped to produce other short films, and uh, I, I also really enjoy doing that, helping people to you know realize their vision. And I've, I have two feature scripts I'm writing, and then I'm working on a uh, a pilot, TV pilot, and a web series. So I have lots of you know different things. It's just a matter of completing them and feeling that they're at the place where I can actually submit them or get the financing to make them. So I'm also a member of a theater company called the Road Theater Company in North Hollywood, and we have a lot of actors there and um, directors and writers, and so it's a great place to um, kind of test out stuff, you know, test out your writing and get feedback. Um, so that's great to have that support group in terms of writing. Do you have a favorite part of the business? Um, I would say, I mean, I, you know, I love acting. It's my first love, and um, being able to step into someone else's shoes and play a wide variety of um, occupations and um Characters, it's, it's always fascinating to me and really a, a joy of mine. But I also love writing and um, I love directing, but I feel more like I, I, I haven't had as much experience with it. And I really do love being on the set as well and just being there to support um, other people while they're getting their vision made and realized. So I have to say I love doing all aspects of it. I just don't feel that I'm out of... Um, I haven't had as much experience as I have had at acting, but um, I really do enjoy writing and directing as well and producing. So, <laughs> mm-hmm. Going back a little bit and a connection a little bit, uh, you were on NCIS, and uh, yes. now that Scott Bakula is on the newest incarnation of NCIS, is there any chance you might uh, get a guest-starring role on that, you think, one day? You know, I would love that. Can you just say that to Don Belisario? <laughs> you talked to him. Un- unfortunately, I talked to him a couple hours ago. So. Oh no! <laughs> I know. I, I would love to. I, I I saw. I mean, I watched a couple of episodes of that. Um, and I also um I know Lucas Black because he appeared on a show of my ex husband's American Gothic, um, which was a terrific show. And um, so I I knew him when he was younger, and I'm so thrilled to see those two working together. But yeah, I would love to. I would love to be a guest star on that show. Um, yeah, Dean was already on yeah. it, so that would be nice if there was a little reunion. Oh, yeah, that would be great. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining me today. You were such a big part of Quantum Leap that I don't think we could have done this episode on MIA without you. So I really appreciate you coming on the show. Thank you. Oh, you're very welcome, and I, I'm, I'm glad you guys are doing that. Cause it's, I think it deserves to be seen again, the whole series. I just I feel like it's a wonderful show. And it's, it's so unique. I mean, there just there aren't a lot of shows like that where you could can go to all these different time periods. And, you know, I just feel like it's really special. 